scripture comes to you from our Nagani Mitchell campus. It's a passage from Matthew that is a story of Jesus and the disciples. And this week, it's coming to you from the Brick Bible, which is a children's Bible that, I kid you not, uses Lego characters to tell the stories. But Jesus said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you, walking on the water. Jesus said, Come, and Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. But he was afraid when he saw the wind, and he began to sink and cried out, Save me, Lord! Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him and said, You of little faith, why do you doubt? Then they climbed into the boat, the wind stopped, and those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Matthew 14, 27 through 33. A little bit later, I would like right now to um, just invite you, we're going to do a little more liturgy today than we often do during this service, but um, we just um, want to center ourselves for this All Saints and Communion Day, and so I would invite you um, to pray with me the prayer of confession that will be on the screen. God of mercy, in our impatience for answers, 
we sometimes turn to idols of our own making and forget our covenant with you. Passionate for what is right, we wrong those with whom we differ. Pleased at the invitation to your banquet, we fail to arrive with humility and thanksgiving. Forgive us when our faith is weak and our zeal too strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Mark's Gospel in the fourth chapter. And if you've been with us for these stewardship weeks, you may not be surprised to hear this text. The farmer plants the word. Some people are like the seed that falls on the hardened soil of the road. No sooner do they hear the word that Satan snatches away what has been planted in them. And some are like the seed that lands in the gravel. When they first hear the word, they respond with great enthusiasm. But there is such shallow soil of character that when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. The seed cast in the weeds represents the ones who hear the kingdom news but are overwhelmed with worries about how, how all the things they have to do and all the things they want to get done will happen. The stress strangles what they heard and nothing comes out of it. But the seed planted in the good earth represents those who hear the word, embrace it, and produce a harvest beyond their wildest dreams. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we've been talking in these last um, couple of weeks about rooting our giving in gratitude. We've been talking about learning how we might grow in the grace of giving. It is our desire to raise more than money, and so we have been asking ourselves, how might we respond to the great commandment to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and our strength? How might we love our neighbors as we love ourselves? How might we take care of our neighbors in the same way that we take care of ourselves? Paul talks about this in 1 Timothy in the 6th chapter. He writes, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. But to put their hope in God richly provides for us with everything for their enjoyment. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. As we remember with deep gratitude the saints of the church today, we grieve the loss of some wise ones among us who had this figured out. Those sowers who planted seeds whose fruit we are now harvesting, whose dedication, love, and joyful living built the church. Not the buildings, although that's also true in many cases, but those who were possessed with spiritual maturity and wisdom enough to be and model grace, joy, goodness, and full confidence in the love and care of God. So confident in these things that they generously shared love, beauty, and grace with the rest of us without fear that they would run out of it. But the seed planted in the good earth represents those who hear the word, embrace it, and produce a harvest beyond their wildest dreams. They who came before us brought us here. And so, now, here we are. 
we have some decisions to make. Will we cling to our laments? We have a lot of laments, don't we? That the field isn't growing how we imagined or expected? That the place of the church in our culture isn't what it was? That many things in our lives are not as we had hoped. Shall we then, friends, therefore, just give up? Or shall we pull ourselves together, set ourselves back on the right road, we have confessed, and we are a forgiven people. Do not worry, because the Lord is near. God hears our prayers with compassion and with abundant, steadfast love. Rejoice, for in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I had an opportunity to take my granddaughter Isabella to the Peter White Public Library Book Babies Story Time. And if you haven't been down to the children's area at the Peter White Public Library, you really should walk through there. It's just beautifully done. But what Isabella discovered was that the train table in the children's area of the library is different than the train table at the children's museum. The train table at the Children's Museum has track that um, you can be pulled off and rebuilt um, in any way that children who are currently there want to do so. At the library, for good reason, I am sure, having had children that played with trains, someone has set a beautiful, big, complicated system of track and then screwed it down to the table. Right? If you've had children that played with train track and one child will build it so carefully and spend so much time and then another child comes along like Godzilla right, and just picks the whole thing up and then there's a drama and a sadness and I'm sure it is for good reason that the table has the track screwed down to it. But Isabella did not appreciate this at all because she likes being the Godzilla child. That's her age right now, one year old, pick up the whole track, right? And it kind of made me think about um, our path and our journey with God. Because God doesn't come along with power tools and screw down <laughs> the route, the journey that we are on. By the grace of God, <laughs> our track goes in many unpredictable directions. <laughs> And that is how we learn and grow. Sometimes we think we're headed one way, and then someone or something comes along and picks the whole track up. And we have to pause and rebuild. We've been asking ourselves, what will our response be to the unearned grace that is abundant in our lives Believe it or not, because I know some days we don't feel this way, but believe it or not, our seed bags have been filled up. Your seed bag is full and mine is too. Paul called the wealthy to open-handedly let go of their possessions. I am someone who walks through life each day, every hour of the day, with my jaw clenched and my hands clenched. My defense is that this is how you march in marching band. And eight years of marching band is what I say is the reason that I clench my fists like this. But I'll catch myself just walking through the grocery store and my fists are clenched, my jaw is clenched. So Paul's words ring true for me. What if we walked through our days with our hands open. But if we walked through our days, whether or not we are wearing a mask, 
with a smile on our faces. I have tried that, walking around with a smile on my face, and I feel like people wonder if I am um, completely stable or not, because you don't see a lot of this smiling um, as people are just walking around. But what, what if we could open-handedly let go In our guide for this series that we have been in, the book The Sower, co-author Gary Hoeg writes this. If you pick up a farmer's almanac, you will notice two characteristics. First, the precise understanding of the ordered universe is mind-boggling. For any day in the year, the almanac can tell you exactly what time the sun will rise and set. It can sketch the position of the stars in the sky. It can tell you about the status of the tides or the moon in its cycle. The almanac also contains seasonal advice in the form of answers to real questions. In winter, what should a farmer do? to prepare the soil for sowing, and when? When in the spring should a farmer sow the seed? What must a farmer do to cultivate and irrigate the crop based on projected summer rainfall for a given region? When should the farmer reap the harvest? The almanac helps prevent a farmer from making costly mistakes. There are also specific formulae eliminate, omitted, eliminated, omitted in an almanac. Nowhere is there a set of steps that guarantees success for the sower. Why? Because farmers lean on the wisdom of generations and their own experience, and then they get to work trusting God to bring the increase. There's no magic formula that guarantees results. Of course, God is the one who makes the seed grow, the one who works in the hearts of givers to help them become more generous. The fields are the lives we touch. The seasonal advice is the collective wisdom from past sowers who understand how to raise up God's kingdom. Similarly, we could imagine our days and seasons in this way. In the winter season, we learn our role as sowers and God's role as harvester. We take these dark, cold days to study biblical truths about giving. We model generosity in any way that we can. We pray for God to help us grow spiritually in the grace of giving. In the springtime, we see transformation. We help each other discern maybe some principles of stewardship and giving. We draw each other closer to God by digging in to God's work. In the summer, we leave the results up to God and we go to the beach. We provide encouragement to one another. We do what we can to engage each other to get involved in God's work in community. Josh has got us going on that this month, even though it's not summer anymore, apparently. In the fall, we trust in God, boldly setting goals for our spiritual growth and mission. We remember that we are graced so abundantly, and we celebrate by telling our story. This is what God has done. Friends, our seed bags are full. And so let us so boldly, with confidence, knowing that some seed will produce no fruit in the hearts of those who receive it. Some will produce a good harvest, some a great harvest, and a few unimaginable harvests will be reaped. We are the transformational people of a transformational God. Friends, we are invited into this season 
of giving, of remembering, and of gratefulness. Amen. We hope you're enjoying Pod Church. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and be notified each time there's a new video. To learn more about everything that's happening in and around Marquette Hope, check out our Facebook page. You can also get our newsletter on the Facebook as well. Pod Church is the weekly online worship of Marquette Hope, a United Methodist faith community located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Find us at facebook.com slash mqthope, mqthope.com, and on YouTube.